Hello everyone, my name is Mayur Gohil. Welcome to the video lecture series on Laplace transforms. In this video lecture, I will be helping you regarding the concepts of convolution and its properties and how to use convolution in solving inverse Laplace transform problems. So let us see the definition of convolution. Convolution of two functions f and g is defined in this following manner f of t star g of t is equal to integral 0 to t f of t minus tau g of tau d tau. Okay. So, one important re uh, remark regarding this definition is that this star operator is not the regular multiplication of two functions. It is the convolution operator and it is defined in this manner. Let us now move towards the properties of convolution. The first property of convolution is that it is commutative. That is f star g is equal to g star f. Okay. Now due to this property, our definition that we have seen has an alternate version as well. Integral 0 to t f of tau g of t minus tau d tau. What does this allows us to do is that we can choose our function f as a function of tau or as a function of t minus tau. Okay, and similar freedom holds for g and uh, g as a function of tau or g as a function of t minus tau. So we can wisely use either of the definition whichever suits us. Let us now move on to the next property of convolution. If there are multiple functions, then convolution property states, uh, convolution has another property that it is associative. Okay. Now, the third property is of great interest to us. It says that Laplace of convolution is nothing but the product of individual Laplaces of the two functions. So, this property is very important to us and in fact it is nothing but an equivalent version to convolution theorem. Let us see what is convolution theorem. If Laplace of f of t is phi 1 of s and Laplace of g of t is phi 2 of s, then f of t star g of t that is the convolution of two function is nothing but the inverse Laplace of the product of individual Laplaces that is phi 1 of s times phi 2 of s. If you observe, I just said that these the third statement is equivalent version of convolution theorem. So, it is nothing but one and the same thing. Okay. Now, let us move ahead to solve an example related to inverse Laplace using convolution theorem. Keep this theorem statement in mind or you can remember this as well or this, whichever one you find it better. Let us move ahead. We have given this problem L inverse of s square over s square plus 9 times s square plus 4. We have to find its inverse Laplace using convolution theorem. So, in order to find this, the first step is that we see this function as a product of two Laplaces, that is phi1 of s and phi2 of s, like the convolution theorem statement had it. So, if it's not necessary to see these functions uh, as a product of two distinct Laplaces, they might be same, but if possible, try to see them as a product of two different Laplaces. Okay. Now, what do we need is, we need to define f and g. So, our step 2 would be, let f of t is equals to s upon s square plus 9. Okay. Thus, what would be f of t? It would be inverse Laplace of s over s square plus 9, which is cosine 3t. In similar manner, we find for gt and 
g of t that would be laplace of g of t is s over s square plus 4 and then g of t is nothing but cosine 2t okay having found f of t and g of t as cosine 3t and cosine 2t respectively what we would be now interested is in applying convolution theorem so how can we use convolution theorem convolution theorem stated that this if i take the inverse laplace of this it would be nothing but the convolution of f and g so that is it by convolution theorem i can get that the main question that is given is equals to inverse uh, the sorry the main question that is inverse laplace of s square over s square plus 9 times s square plus 4 it is same as the convolution of f of t star g of t okay so now let us move ahead what is the definition f of t star g of t is nothing but integral 0 to t f of t minus tau g of tau d tau now we substitute the functions so f of t was cosine 3t and g of t is nothing but cosine 2t f of t minus tau would be replace here t by t minus tau so that would be cosine 3t minus 3 tau and g of t is cos 2t so g of tau will be cos of 2 tau then if we multiply and divide it by 2 what do we obtain is our defactorization formula format and then we use it and we obtain this as the resultant so that would be cosine 3t minus tau plus cosine 3 ta t minus phi tau d tau now observing that tau is the variable under consideration so we integrate here with respect to tau on integrating with respect to tau we obtain sin 3t minus tau divided by minus 1 plus sin 3t minus phi tau divided by minus phi how does this minus 1 and minus phi come you take the derivative of the angle so when you take the derivative you have to divide it under integration right when you do integration you have to take the integration of the main function and the derivative of the it's the chain rule so you take the derivative and divide it and you obtain here okay so similarly you do for it cosine 3t minus phi tau and then you plug in the limits on plugging up the limits what you get is sine 2t divided by minus 1 plus sine 2t divided by phi plus sine 3t plus sine 3t by phi okay that is what you will get this is half is always carried out now and now you simplify it on simplification you get your final answer as 3 upon phi sine 3t minus 2 upon phi sine 2t thus your final answer at the step phi you will get is nothing but 3 upon phi sine 3t minus 2 upon phi sine 2t that's your final answer so i hope you have followed the method of finding inverse laplace using convolution i would like to make a note here that while using convolution method be careful because there is one more variable going to come into the picture that is tau and you have to integrate with respect to tau and many times it is observed that the while using convolution method the problem lengthens a little bit so the number of steps might increase so carefully solve while using convolution method okay so that's it for today Thank you.